Ross Lyon is returning to the St Kilda Footy Club. Uh, he's coached for well over well over 300 games. He's been to four grand finals. He knows what he's doing. But he's been in the media, Kane, and that's the cheap seats where we have all care, no yes. responsibility. When the grand final finishes, you just walk away and you forget about footy. I don't know what he's doing. He's jumped back into the deep end and he's been good enough to take our call. Rossi, congratulations from all of us. Well done. Thanks, guys. Good morning, Kane. What are you doing, man? You've had the media world. We just walk away on grand final day and you don't think about footy until March again. And now you're deep, deep, deep back <laughs> into it. Yeah, no, it's... Um... Look, it was a really, really big decision. It's um, not easy coaching AFL footy. And, you know, as you said, the coach, you know, I mean, coach sackings sometimes in the year, sometimes <laughs> during the middle of the year. And, you know, there was some, you know, um, you know, it can be really messy. You know, we, uh, you know, watch from afar, you know, David Noble, Ben Rutten, and then, and then um, Ratten. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's not not pretty to watch sometimes, but, but when you look at elite sport around the world, the, the thirst for results and pressure brought to bear on clubs, um, decisions are made. So, look, I'm fully aware of what, what I'm walking into, but you, know, you summed it up. You know, like I really enjoyed my time in the media. I learned so much. I, I worked with some great people, saw their skill set. You know, found a deeper understanding. But at the end of the day, like even every week, you just pack up, walk out the Triple M box. <laughs> You know, and it's sort of, there's nothing, you know, like you're on a car, car park, see you next week. So, you know, um, yeah, it's the highs and the lows. Um, you've got to take that risk to try and experience great things. So uh, in the end, you know, I was prepared to do that. But look, I, I made sure over this, you know, those 10 days or whatever it was, there were some really deep conversations and, you know, you, you got to make sure that you feel you're going to be surrounded by really competent people in those key posts and that you're going to have support. So that's all you can ask for. And then you've got to write your own story as, as a player and coaching group. So, and, and look, I want to do it better. I need to improve. I want to improve. I want to do it better. I've got thoughts on that. And, and I sort of voiced some of that in the press conference yesterday. But, yeah, yeah, you take that emotionally. You know, yeah. Well, there, so- you know, there'll be a lot of criticism and all that so that's okay what do you want to do better can you give us an insight into where you feel you can improve from last time yeah what I said really like um, you know quick pricey like I was the accidental coach I didn't want to coach senior footy they rang me up to interviews <laughs> mm-hmm. I went to St Kilda stuffed it up early and then um, learn on the I was nimble enough to learn on the run and develop a, a deeper philosophy and then of you know possibility and all those things and letting go of results and then got to work on the mechanics and in the end got to the right on the curve of how, how footy's been played for a long time now and then I, I left in controversial circumstances so I, I coached with expectation there and I, once we got going I just flatlined really I, <laughs> I was too scared to take my foot off because I knew it was like to lose so when I went to Fremantle look under enormous pressure and I just went in and got it done, to be honest. It was like, this is what I want, and we go away. And I was helping. I probably worked harder then than I did at St Kilda, you know. So, um, I really, what I said is it's blank canvas. But now I come in, there's a blank canvas. I've been out of the game three years. There's some, you know, Corey Enright and Hayes, you know, they're, they're really high level, and Damon Carroll. So, I'll throw it to them. How do you want to play? And then I'll have some views. Um so I'll blank canvas. I want to take people on the journey, you know, and I've spoken to mentors. I really want to really inspire the people around me outside of the player group as, as much as you do the player group. So and I think I've got a deeper understanding of, of who I am and I, I just don't want to regress under the pressure, you know. So what you've seen in the media is, is really my authentic self and I'd like to bring more of that to the table. You're a fascinating figure. We we all uh, are captivated by every word. One thing you said yesterday, amongst a lot of things, was that you didn't look at the list, Ross, and that you hadn't done that at Fremantle and St Kilda previously. Now, I find that surprising. Why is it that the list isn't important to you when you're considering jumping back in as deep as you have? Well, that, the thing is, like when you're at Sydney, I, I clearly knew St Kilda's list and they had good capabilities, but I went to Fremantle, in all honesty, I... <clears throat> I did not look. I did not look because you've got to back yourself in, right? So, and 
the only reason you're getting a job is because it isn't perfect. I know mm. that. So I think I think all the talks around the list and, and that really is that probability mindset, you know. So Tony Alshaw was a great friend of mine and we we, we did talk about this because I reached out and, you know, he said, Ross, and I, and I agree with him, it's not about the list. It's really about getting the right people in the right places and doing it over time. You know, like I've signed for four years, but who knows what it's going to take, you know. So um, you can see that with Clark. What's the first thing he does? He, he can get Barney, who we know is a great person, and he's helped build up Melbourne. He's going to help build up North. So I really think that's what it's about. So it was about the list. Like, we'd all like to get to Melbourne and Geelong, mm. you know, and Richmond, but it doesn't work like that, you know. So that, that it's, it's true and it's fun. I mean, do I know them? Yeah, because I've commentated. Have I had a look? As it progressed, yeah. But it was never going to stop me because you've got to back your people in. And a couple of good drafts, you can see with Port, it can turn you around really quickly. And I think there's a real foundation. We've just got to bring out some real A-graders and help create environment to produce great players because um, that, that's what it takes. So you've got... I was interested, you know, not yesterday, but a couple of days before you spoke about the fact that you, you thought that the club had been... I don't know, I knew exactly words were, were disrespected or uh, yeah, the, they had the standing... Yeah, I didn't top. like the narrative around them. Well, so explain that yeah, to yeah, us. I didn't like the narrative. Oh, well, even I was at the really after grand final with the September club. I'm, I'm standing with Ray Wild. And I'll just put a... There was, there was a lot of talk about Nick and his influence in this. The first time I spoke to Nick was as I was late, late middle of this week and he rang from Texas. He was like, oh, my God, you know. So mm. I knew he always wanted me to coach and those things, but there's no fingerprints from my end with Nick Greywell on this. So I think I'm going to make that really clear. I almost wanted to chirp up in the press conference, you know. So, But, you know, you know that stat. I'm standing there with a group of people and, you know, the bloke walks up. Or, you know, the stat of, you know, Dangerfield and St Kilda. And I was like, oh, what are you talking about? You know, oh, you know, Dangerfield's played as many finals as St Kilda has in its history or something. I was like, I'm going to piss off. <laughs> so, uh, just, you know, so, <laughs> excuse the language, but I was like, it really irked me. And then there's a little bit, they're irrelevant. I don't know. I just think, look, they live almost in the best part of Melbourne and I'm by a space site. They've got an incredible facility. They've been in grand finals in the recent past. Um, they've produced great players. They've got 60,000 members. They've got great sponsors like RCA and, and those type of things. And I think, I think they've got a lot going for them. You know, when I was like, why would the guy go to St Kilda? I remember the classifier. I said, Lordy, well, why wouldn't he go? <laughs> Whatever they got, you know. So, yeah, I mean, you've probably shackled up with, had your shackles up with Melbourne over the time because you, you know the quality of the place and the history of the place. So that's what I was talking about there. So, I mean, you can stand there and defend it or you can get in and try and do something and put your, roll your sleeves up. Yeah. The four grand finals and, and no one's really come closer um, than you. If you had got one of those, Ross, do you think you would have put your hand up to coach again or is it the, the lack of that one grand final win that is, that is driving you? Yeah, it's a really good question, Kane. It's hard to answer, really, uh, because I've got the other one. So, mm. look, I was part of one at, at Sydney as a midfield coach, um, and, and and that was a really joyous time. And they're special bonds. I was I was up there for the AFL lunch and the, the Swans kind of prelim, and I connected with some of those Swannies. It was pretty special. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's something I, I desire to do. It, it, I don't feel it defines me, but it defines my coaching, I suppose, doesn't it? So, look, to be honest, I was 56, a freight trainer, desk bearing down on you. I was at the AFL lunch. You know, great people there, Kernahan, Don Scott. And I just happened to be sitting there parking. I got up, and he was one of my coaches. He was one of the great coaches, you know. And I looked at him, and he's 82, and I was like, whoa, you know, time goes, and when it's gone, it's gone, right? So, And he filled, filled those pages, so... When this opportunity came, I was like, you know what, I, I can do what I was doing at Wiesel Property Group in property development and the Monash one, but I, I think I had to take this opportunity and, and take the emotional risk to try and achieve something, you know. Or, 
it, it's it's rarefied atmosphere, really. So, mm. but, but you got to be up for the fight, you know. So, <laughs> I am a bit nervous. <laughs> uh, I, I reckon you're gonna be all right. Um, interesting in terms of yeah, you, know, you you and your personality and, you, and your self awareness, and you know you've been you, your life experiences mean that you come in third time round and you will do things differently and you'll be better at this and you want to take people along for the journey and all that sort of stuff, which is great. And then there's yeah, you know, which is can be then translated to warm, fuzzy and cuddly, which I don't think is going to happen at all. Um, but then you I can... interpret cuddly as fat. So I'm, <laughs> <to listen. laughs> I'm, I'm one of those. But then you got this stated aim of the club saying we want a harder edge, we want to be more ruthless, you know, we want to be more... So marrying those up is going to be a nice balance for you. Yeah, you're really spot on, Gaz. I've listened to the commentary um, and... And look, there is contextual leadership, you know. There's when there's simple problems to solve, there's complex problems to solve, and there, and there's sort of real crisis problems. So you need to move in and out of all of those. And like my players, two groups, right? Everyone says I'm hard, I'm this. And look, I am honest and I'm direct, but your groups can't give, and, and you guys know, and honestly, they can't give what they gave over long periods and get to the games if if you're souring them up. It's mm. impossible. Mm. It's absolutely impossible. So what I need, and I got some incredible texts yesterday, so from, you know, Dockers players and Saints players, So which really made me feel really good. So it really is probably just showing the other side of the club land and with my players how I really do care about them, really, because... You know, I was—I pro- I never really showed the media that authentic side. But in saying that, you know, it's far from perfect. And the, the club wants a hard edge. I, the real model is the Swans model. It's, you know, what I brought the St Kilda Freeman. It really is the players. What do you want to be? What are the values? What are the behaviours going to make us successful? And I'll be congruent to them in my leadership. that That's really what I do. I, I don't set... I work with them to set the standards, and then, but once they come, you know, it's like Ruzi used to say, "Well, boys, they're your standards, not mine. I'm just holding you to account." So, that tends to be the model, and because they're emotionally connected, you can't tell someone what they're going to be. They're going to decide what they they want to be. So, how will you play? Because there's always a narrative around your game style, and and you um, rebuffed that a little bit yesterday. Um, what can Saints fans expect about the way that you will play, and how your game style may have developed since last time you were in charge? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, the Saints. You know, we will press footy. Doctors press footy. I never really defended with the ball in hand, although later I did because that's where the game went. And to be honest, in my last year at the Dockers. We, we lengthened, we surged, we were direct. All the numbers, you can win that a look, anyone has a deep dive. And at round 12, we were one defence and fifth attack. We'd beaten mm. four of the top five. And we've really been lauded, to be truthful, for an emerging team. So, and then we fell off the cliff with injuries. So, um, I'd like to... And the surge game is... And that was before the stand mark. So, um, the stand rule, I think, really just brought the game back to almost what it was, to be truthful. Um, so, I have... I have said to Corey Enright and I've said to Lenny Hayes, you, you guys put it to me. You show me. because it, um, But I'd like to play more of a go surge game because I don't coach you. Do you know what I mean? I, I mm. don't put clangers up on the board. I don't tell mm. you what you've turned over. That's I've never coached like that. You know, go and ask Robert Eddy and a few of those guys you know, that I've coached or managed the ball. I, I never talk, spoke about their skill. Did I want them to improve it and working on the track? Yeah, but... It was never something that would hinder them. So bring bring your effort, play your role, and, and we'll get on the same page and we'll have a dip. You know, that's all you can ask, isn't it? That's it. And uh, messages are coming through thick and fast, mate. This is going to be a journey and a ride. Just a quick one before we let you go, and we appreciate the time. I know it's a busy day for you. And temper, temper text machine. The temper's got a bit of smoke coming out of it at the minute. Um Rob Harvey, Brennan Goddard, <laughs> Stephen Silvani, these names have all been mentioned. Is there anything you can let us in on uh, this morning? Oh, oh look, I heard some of those things. I think Sos is enjoying Noosa too much to, <laughs> yeah, to no. get involved in this management. Good effort to get him in there. We used to mm. sit in a Kuna 
Mustang Road Car and they can get the bagels at 7 o'clock every <laughs> Monday. I don't think he'll be coming back. <laughs> um, and I don't think Joey will let him off, off the leash. So, um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I'd, like, I'd love to have, you know, feel those guys back. Robert Harvey, uh, he's got an incredible respect. Um, I have reached out to him. So he, he's got a decision to make. Um you know, and Brendan Goddard, look, you know, he, he's been really public in it. But to be truthful, I'm going in there today to, to have some meetings to understand it. Soft cap's a real issue. Um, but all I want to do is just get good people on the bus, you know, even more than technical competency. I'd like both, but the first thing is if you can get the people that work really hard and care about your players, um, I think that's a real start, you know. So a lot of those people feel those that field. So that would be nice. Rossi, it's exciting for St Kilda fans and um, the talk of irrelevance no longer, I can guarantee you that. Yep. Uh, it's up and about. <laughs> People are up and about and um, we're going to strap ourselves in and enjoy the ride. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kane. Have a good great luck. Time with it. Good on you, mate. Ross Lyon. Righto. Uh, you've had plenty to say on your text. Uh, um, it's, it's positive. Um, yep. There's always a couple of dissenters, which we always know the case, but now's your time, St Kilda fans. This is Ross. It's, uh, people talk about the way he talks and his tone. This is Ross Lyon. This is why he's great for the game. Whether you like him or not, he stirs emotions. I do know how smart he is. I do know how mm. clever he is from a footy mm. sense. And um, don't be, you know, if you don't like the way he talks or the tone of his voice, don't get sucked in by that. Uh, but 